People who reside in the city of Salem have been allowed to keep up to five chickens in their backyards since January 1, 2011. To find out more, visit SalemChickens.com. Having a small flock of chickens as pets may be simpler than you think. In fact, they're easier and less expensive to raise than dogs. This program will introduce you to the basics of urban chicken raising. People like to keep backyard chickens for lots of reasons, but eggs are probably at the top of the list. There's nothing like eggs laid by your own happy, healthy pets. They're fresher and tastier than store-bought eggs, and studies have shown they're more nutritious too. Each hen will lay about one egg per day, but this can vary depending on the breed and the individual bird, and they prefer a dark private nest box like this, and when they're done, they like to announce it. Egg production slows down in the wintertime and as the chickens age. Roosters are not needed to get eggs. In fact, the eggs you see in the store were not fertilized by roosters, and these weren't either, which is good because roosters can be loud and aggressive and are not allowed in the city. When new to raising chickens, people are often surprised to discover that hens lay eggs in a variety of colors. They can be white or many different shades of brown. Sometimes they have speckles. Some breeds, referred to as Easter eggers, even lay green eggs. Others lay eggs that are dark chocolate brown. The color of the shell does not affect the taste, and they're all delicious. You'll find them in different shapes and sizes, too. Some will be so big you can't close the egg carton down on top of them. Some will be pointy or have a funny shape like this one, with wrinkles at the tip. With a small backyard flock, You'll get to know which hen lays which kind of egg, so you'll always be able to tell which of your birds has been laying. There is one drawback to fresh eggs. These eggs are so fresh that they can be difficult to peel when hard-boiled, because the membrane that attaches the egg to the inner shell is still very strong. But if you put them in a vegetable steamer like this one for about 15 minutes, and then dump them immediately into ice-cold water, you'll find that they peel quite nicely. Once you've got your coop all set up, adult hens make great pets that require little work. Some like to be held, some tolerate it, others don't like it at all. Most probably fall into the tolerate category. You might have heard people say it helps if you handled them a lot as chicks, but I found this not to be necessarily true. Individual birds vary greatly in their personalities, likes, and dislikes. Some are extremely shy, always staying just out of reach. Others are very inquisitive and friendly. Some will readily eat out of your hands, while others will not. Chickens are similar to more traditional pets in this way. Only roosters crow. Hens are fairly quiet, except briefly when they lay an egg. But you might notice that some hens are more vocal than others. As I've said before, raising chickens is easy, and one of the main reasons is because at dusk they instinctually head straight for the coop and put themselves away. Only when the temperature is expected to drop below freezing do I turn on a heat lamp for the night. Chickens actually handle cold weather much better than hot, so this is mainly to keep their drinking water from freezing. Having access to clean, unfrozen water is very important, and chickens drink more than you might think. Stagnant water becomes slimy after a bit, so once a week you'll need to scrub the container and refill it with fresh water. I use a 250 watt red light because it provides heat without the brightness so they can sleep. Once inside the coop, they'll hop up onto the perch and settle in for the night. This is where they'll stay perfectly still and quiet until morning. You can also lure them into the coop before dusk if you need to put them away sooner. I typically bribe them with cut up pieces of cabbage, corn, crackers, leftover pasta or rice, or other kitchen scraps. All you have to do is come in behind them and close the doors at night to keep the draft out and the predators away. Be sure to secure exterior doors with safety latches like this, placed at both the top and the bottom of each door, because even in the city, raccoons and possums are a serious threat. Unfortunately, I know too many people who have lost their pet chickens to predators even though they thought their structure was secure. 
so please make the extra effort to ensure your girls are safe. Next we'll talk about what to feed your backyard flock. Chickens need commercial feed made especially for laying hens to ensure proper nutrition. Treats and scraps alone are not adequate. There are many brands and types to choose from. You can get organic feed, for example, or if you want extra omega-3 in your eggs, you can buy feed with flaxseed. And they're typically sold in 40 or 50 pound bags. Chicken feed should be stored in a dry place that rodents can't access. A metal can is best because rats can chew through plastic. Some people like to make their own feed with assorted grains and seeds, but I prefer to take advantage of all the research that's gone into the production of commercial poultry feed. Hens tend to kick up straw and dirt, so both feed and water should be up off the floor, high enough to keep clean, but low enough that even the smallest chicken can still reach it. Cracked corn or scratch can be given in small portions as an extra special treat, but this is fattening and has little nutritional value so it should not be relied upon as a primary food source. It's also best to avoid giving them meat, sugar, or anything greasy or spicy. If you want your girls to be healthy and provide you with nutritional eggs, then make sure they get a variety of vegetables, fruits, grains, and bugs for extra protein. Scraps are fine, but never give them anything moldy. You'll find that hens eat more in the winter time when they're burning extra energy to stay warm and when bugs, grass, and garden scraps are not as readily available. Like water, they should also have access to food at all times. It's necessary to provide oyster shell and grit as well. These can be found in large or small bags, but for a handful of backyard hens, a small bag will do just fine. Oyster shell is a source of calcium to ensure their eggs have a nice hard shell, and grit is made up of tiny rocks used in their gizzard to grind up food, since chickens lack teeth. Some chickens need more than others, so it's best to keep these supplements separate from the regular feed so individual birds can nibble as needed. Now let's talk a little about chicken behavior. You might be surprised to learn that chickens make great pets, and just like dogs, each one has an individual personality. They'll even come when you call them, especially if you have treats. Mine come running when I say, girls, looky, looky, look, look, look. I think watching chickens run is hilarious, and you probably will too. Whenever possible, I let my hands free range within the fenced backyard. The more I let them wander around, the happier and healthier they seem, and egg production increases too. I simply prop open the door so they can still access their food, water, and nest box throughout the day. The more space they have, the better, and it will ensure they all get along. Chickens only peck and harass one another when they're stressed, crowded, or bored. I've never had a problem with that because there's adequate room and resources in my yard to support five hens. Even on rainy days, chickens enjoy being outside. If it rains hard, they'll seek shelter under a tree, and when it lets up, they'll venture out once again. If you're worried that your dog will hurt your chickens, and some breeds will, they can be trained not to. Some dogs are not a problem. For example, my golden retriever was never a threat, showing no interest in the chickens whatsoever. But my border collie, Blue Healer Mix, was an entirely different story. He was obsessed with the chickens and would lunge at the wire fence that protected them. I used to have to keep my pets separate, which was always a hassle, but then I met a fellow who taught me how to train him not to harm my chickens. I followed his instructional video available at this website, and it worked great. Now we can all enjoy the yard together in peace. When left to roam, chickens will explore every corner of the yard and stay busy foraging for seeds and bugs, and they'll keep the grass mowed too. They'll even eat all those nasty snails and slugs. In the wintertime, I let them forage in the fallow garden where they can feast on grubs and provide fertilizer. But in the summertime, I do have to fence off the garden to keep them from eating all my vegetables and blueberries. Some people clip their flight feathers to prevent their chickens from going over the fence but I have found that not to be necessary. 
If your yard is not barren and has lots of interesting plants and places to explore, your girls will be perfectly content to stay put. Chickens are not good flyers, but smaller breeds or lightweight younger birds could probably breach a fence, but they're not likely to even try unless they're being chased. They'll spend the day preening themselves and perching in high places. And they'll keep busy scratching at the ground to reveal yummy things to eat and digging at the base of plants where they gobble up slug eggs. But one of their most favorite activities is dust bathing. During the wet season, dry fluffy dirt is harder to find, so they'll go to extreme measures to find a place to do this. So it's important to provide them with a dry area year round. Dust bathing is essential for keeping them free of parasites like mites or lice, and they really seem to enjoy it. Don't worry, they'll shake off all the dirt when they're done, just like a wet dog. Whenever they see me grab the shovel, my girls come running because they know this means worms and bugs will be easy to get. As I turn over the garden to mix in the straw and fertilizer, they'll be right there, ready to compete for the biggest worms. It's really fun and relaxing to watch chickens engage in all these activities. In fact, some would even say it's therapeutic. It's time to talk about chicken waste. One of the biggest concerns people face when trying to legalize backyard chickens is odor. Chickens don't stink, but of course their waste can, just like waste from any animal has the potential to smell. But five birds generate less waste than one medium-sized dog, and unlike dog feces, chicken manure makes wonderful fertilizer for the garden. Since chickens sleep all night on a perch, most of their waste inside the coop will be concentrated directly underneath, making it easy to collect every couple of days. Inside the run, their waste will be scattered about. Here, most people use what's called the deep layer method, which simply means we occasionally toss fresh straw over what's already there. Only once in the spring and once in the fall do I need to break it all up and thoroughly clean the coop and the run. Unfortunately, free-ranging birds will leave waste wherever they go. I either hose it off the deck or scoop it up off the lawn on a regular basis. During the winter months, it goes directly into the garden beds where it quickly breaks down and doesn't stink. In the summertime when the garden is occupied, it goes into the composter for use the following spring. Overall, I found chicken waste to be less work, less smelly, and easier to deal with than dog waste. You've probably noticed by now that all five of my hens are very different looking. There are hundreds of beautiful breeds to choose from. This one is a blue Moran. I call her Hannah. She's the shyest of the bunch. Molly is another type of Moran called a white Wheaton. She's the clever one. Both Morans are one year old. The one with the black and white stripes, Fiona, is a Plymouth Barred Rock. She's the most aggressive, but full of personality and probably my favorite. Gwendolyn is a golden sex link and is much more vocal than all the rest, constantly chatting about something. Fiona and Gwendolyn are two years old. And this big girl in the middle is Shaniqua, a black sex link. She is five years old and the boss. She doesn't lay eggs anymore, but she's my pet and will always have a home here. Well cared for backyard chickens can live up to 10 years, and I certainly hope they do. For a listing of future episodes and more information, visit SalemChickens.com.